Hey, did you know Americans stop or prevent a violent crime one to three million times per year with a gun? Funny, you don't hear that on the media, do you? Nope. But that's right. Studies from the Florida State, the CDC, and the Crime Prevention Research Center show that guns are used to protect life 25 times more often than when they are un, uh, used to take a life. That's 25 times. And that estimate is on the low end. So if you believe that good people deserve the best tools to defend themselves and their families, then you should be a member of San Diego County Gun Owners. San Diego County Gun Owners makes it real easy to connect with the community that's a fighting to defend and restore your Second Amendment right. You can become a member for as little as $10 a month. Go to sdcgo.org backslash join and become a member today. Hey, Joe. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you. And then we got Desi. Hi, Dave. And we've got Alicia. Hey. How are you guys doing? It's going to be a good, good show. So it looked like you had a good time at the wedding. I did. It was a lot of fun. Surprised you came back. Of course. It's San Diego. It's way better than Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So uh, what have we got, Joe? Are you running at the show today or... No, I'll run as much as you want me to well, run. I'll run. You know, so, you know me. According to the, <laughs> yeah, you do follow directions extremely well. So, what's the, what do you know about the gun owner suppose in symposium? Oh, that's Alicia's end. Alicia ah, knows much more right. about that than I do. <laughs> Are you running this show? I can do it. So the gun, so the symposium. So at the gun show, at San Diego County Gun Owners and a Gun Owners Radio, we're going to have a number of speakers on both days, both Saturday and Sunday, with a, a number of various topics What's the throughout the day. of that show? Ju- June 3rd and June 4th. Oh, that's what? Next weekend? That's next weekend, yep. Yeah. Where at? It's, uh, ooh, ooh, it's in East County somewhere. It I know is, that. <laughs> give me a second to flip the address. It's the uh, Masonic Lodge, right? Is that it is. Doing it's it? one of them, correct. Yeah. It is. A Masonic, Masonic Lodge. Lodge. So it's not going to be as big as our Del Mar Fairgrounds no. gun show, but we have a gun show back. That's Excuse what people me. have been asking better for. Than Absolutely. Nothing. It's better than nothing. Yes. This and is it's true. Gonna, from what I understand, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be pretty well stocked with almost anything and everything you need. And pretty well attended, I would hope. And I've got you know, I might be wrong, but I think like there's gonna be more guns on display than say at Del Mar, because they were under such, you know. Well, I was surprised actually at Del Mar because that was the first gun show I'd ever been to was the in Del Mar. Oh, really? And I was expecting like guns. I mean, there were guns, but I mean, there was a guns. lot of other stuff there. Yeah, which it, I didn't didn't realize that's what it was. And it probably made it better, unless you were going out to look for a gun. Well, there's certainly variety. I mean, right. We were, we were saying it looked a lot like a swap meet with guns. Is what <laughs> it kind of. Like. <laughs> All right, what did you find, right, kid? So you got the address. So it's at the East San Diego Masonic Lodge. Address is 7849 Tommy Drive in San Diego. And as far as the lineup for the symposium with the speakers, we have a number of really great people. On Saturday, we have uh, some advanced CCW training with Bill DC, great oh, friend good. of the show. Oh, yeah. We have CCW Lifestyle with Matthias Quillenberg. I know him well. I work with him on occasion. Uh, we have a, uh, a speaking opportunity for Mike Schwartz. He, uh, it's going to be all about how to get your CCW in San Diego County. So if you have questions, you want to know the process, you don't understand where to go and what to do next, that's the time for you. Uh, you we, there's a situational awareness uh, with a, a gear toward teens. However, it's going to be beneficial for all ages, and that's going to be led by myself. And uh, we have Colin Rudolph, who's going to give updates on the lawsuits that affect our Second Amendment rights. And we're going to end the day with a gun owner's replay about shotguns with Clint Smith. And that's oh, okay. all on Saturday. The Sunday lineup, we have uh, a gun owner's re- uh, radio replay with John Lott, and that's talking about the dismantling of gun control industry and misinformation. Uh, we have a cognitive skills for defensive shooting talk by Mike DeSargo. We have five tips to effective activism uh, with the San Diego County Gun Owners Rep. And another uh, how to get your CCW class with Mike Schwartz. And we're going to end the day with another replay by Stephen Williford about the Barefoot Defender. Wow. So big lineup. Busy yeah, big weekend. Lineup. What busy co- weekend. What's the cost to go? Cost to go is 15 bucks. And if you go on the website, so the gun owners radio.com slash gun show, there is a $3 off coupon. Is that per day? $15? Per yeah, day. Per day. Correct. Right. Correct. Man, that's a deal, though, for you know, say, just for that kind of stuff, aside from the guns. Right. Just from I mean, those classes mentioned. are 100 bucks each, typically. I was just going to say the seminars and classes, mm-hmm. those, are, mm-hmm. those come with the price of admission. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. But you can also become a member whenever you're there. Yeah. That could be a cost of admission, too. Yeah. There you oh, go. could it? I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sound a good. See, I like entrepreneurs. People hey. are always thinking around the box. Are you going to have anything to eat there? Sure hope so. Probably you'll have some food trucks, I would assume, I but would, it's not I'm guaranteed. Sure. Yeah. Well, I'm hungry. I mean, if you're going to stay all day, then, you know. I've been here all day. 
I could go for one, but anyway. You go for yeah. a food truck, huh? Cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big fan of food trucks, but I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of them out there. That oh, are... Food trucks have come a long way. They have, As, they have I remember things. when I used to work out there, they That's, weren't called food trucks. They were called, called Roach Coach. There you go. Yeah. And aptly named. And I had a friend of mine's <laughs> pork and beans blow up in his face and put third degree <laughs> bean burns. <laughs> and I've just never been a fan of that form of culinary uh, devices. Fortunately, they've come a long way. See, I keep saying they need an ice cream truck, but for adults, it's like margaritas, yeah, right? Yeah, so they drive yeah, around. And pass out Mark. Hey, I'd get an In and Out Burger truck. They do a. Awesome that would be job. awesome. Yeah, and even Chick Fil A does a good job with it too. There you go. It's amazing how good something so lightweight. Well, we promise not to talk about food. Too late. And yeah, we're talking every about food. show we too end late. up talking about food. So, all right. So, what else we got today? What else? What else we got on the show? So what we got. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go, 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 Joe. It's all you. Go, Joe. No, oh, I was I like gonna it. say. Well, we have Ryan Petty here, Thank who's um, that's gonna be an interesting um, discussion who is that gentleman? for that. So Ryan's uh, daughter was one of the uh, people that was killed at the um, the Florida shooting at Parkland at the oh, um, that's was it, right. uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas mm-hmm. uh, High School, mm-hmm. and um, it's interesting because you know Ryan's after going through all that, uh, he's become an advocate of. Um, you know, trying to fix that problem mm-hmm. and, and see if we can avoid these things in the future. And uh, so he's going to have a very interesting take on that. Um, so it'll be it'll be fun to talk to him. Um, For sure. It should be very interesting. And then uh, and then Desi's here is going to talk I'm here. Uh, We're gonna a lot about We're going to be talking about the history stuff. of not I mean give some updates and oh, yeah. talk about some stories. How long have you been doing this? So coming up on my three-year anniversary, actually. Mike and I were talking about that God. the other day. Three years I've been helping out the organization and – Man, we've made leaps and bounds since I, I came on, and I love the progress that we're making. Because yeah. you're up to how many girls so far? 850. Good God. That's right. good. I was going to ask you that number, too, because I, I talk about in all the classes that we teach with Bill, I always, uh, when I'm pitching um, um, San Diego County gun owners and not me, SD, I always uh, reference how many women have been through that. So I was stuck at 700, so, so it's 850 now. So good. it's 850 applicants, but we've had 800 graduate. Okay. And by gun prom, which is in September, I'm hoping to hit a thousand is my goal. So we can celebrate having a thousand applicants at that point. Excellent. Excellent. How many ambassadors uh, do you guys have? About 15. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Alicia's an ambassador. Mm-hmm. And so it's great that, you know, I keep bringing in some new faces and because people get burnt out on volunteering, right? So it's great to kind of replenish. And, you know, I've got some of the girls that have been with me since the beginning, which is great. But, you know, we all work towards the same cause because we all understand the value from the program and, you talk to anybody about not me and they love what we do and you know appreciate all the hard work that we've done. I mean, come on, even the city of San Diego or the county of San Diego recognized mm-hmm. our efforts with that proclamation a couple of weeks yeah. ago. So that was pretty cool. Huh? Yeah, really cool. Didn't even know it was going to happen, but that's because all you're doing is working. All you're not is looking, work, 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 not right. looking for accolades. You're just looking to help. No, but every now and then it's nice to have. Yeah. Well, you know that's one thing San Diego is pretty good about doing. They do recognize, you know, hard work for sure. Well, that is good, too. And it's like, you know, with more and more women getting into guns in general and CCW in particular, it's, you know, it's because I, what I always tell classes is it's good to go talk to another woman. Because if you go to a gun shop, no offense to gun shops, but you talk to a guy at a gun shop, you're going to leave with a little pink gun. And it's just, you know, talk to a woman that knows something and you'll you know, be all much You know, all my guns are off. painted, too, right? I just got a teal <laughs> shield, which is great. And then, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, we've seen that. Yes, <laughs> you have. Yeah, she's got it all decked out. If you own a gun in California, you really should have a good attorney specializing in California gun laws. Duh. And you should put his number on your speed dial. Because if you ever have a legal matter that involves firearms, like getting pulled over, you need a California firearms lawyer, John Dillon. Especially if you have questions about red flag laws, gun registration, transportation, or maybe you just need to know if your guns are compliant. Maybe you inherited a couple. Our trusted firearms attorney is John Dillon. John Dillon truly specializes in California gun laws. Put his number on your phone right now. That's 760-642-7150. One more time. 760-642-7150. Be prepared. All right, Joe, what do we, who do we have on next? Well, uh, who we have here is Ryan Petty. So, Ryan, are you uh, are you here? Are you on the line? I'm here. Okay, great, Thanks Ryan. Well, welcome to the show. And um, I'll just quickly introduce um, Ryan Petty is um, the uh, the dad of one of the students that was killed at the uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School shooting in 2018. And um, I think one of the things that uh, 
you know, after going through that kind of tragedy, um, one of the things that Ryan has decided to do was see if he could uh, get out there and do something about it, maybe stop some of these things or have an impact on some of these things happening in the future. So, um, again, Ryan, welcome to the show. And uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're doing right now along those lines? Hey, but Ryan, first off, hey, hearts and prayers from here at uh, Gun Owners Radio for you and your family. And it's, you know, it's strong that you're doing what you're doing and we can't, you know, thank you enough for taking time out of your uh, Saturday or Sunday and calling in. I, well, I appreciate it. And thank you for those, uh, for the kind words. Um, it's been five years, but it's many uh, days. It feels like yesterday that we lost my daughter, Elena, and uh, 16 others. And I've grown close to a, a number of the families. Um, and, and our, you know, our goal, once we sort of caught our breath and put our feet back on the ground was to figure out what happened, why it happened, and what can we do to prevent something like this from happening again. Not that it would bring our loved ones back, but an opportunity to prevent another family from going through what we had to go through. And I'm really proud to say we've, we've uh, moved heaven and earth, it feels like here in the state of Florida, to be able to protect our schools. And for the most part, and there's a couple of caveats to this, but for the most part, we've been able to do that without infringing on the Second Amendment rights of law-abiding gun owners. And I'm really proud of that, Um, really proud that we took a different path in Florida than many states take after these unfortunate tragedies. And and again, we've been able to, uh, boy, I can go through a laundry list of things we're doing in Florida to protect schools. Um, In fact, um, I was uh, three years ago, I was appointed to the Florida State Board of Education. I'm now the vice chair of the State Board of Education. And so one of uh, one of the things I focus heavily on, in addition to the other things like academics and everything else you would imagine is school safety. And we have a an office of safe schools at the state level that has the authority to hold school districts and schools and principals and administrators and law enforcement accountable for protecting our kids and our teachers at school. So with all of that, I'll take a breath and we can go whatever direction you feel uh, you want to go. Well, you know, th- Ryan, uh, one of the things I did want to ask you about, um, you know, I was saying that you'd made the comment that it's, um, you know, it's not really a gun issue. It's more, it's much more complex than that. And that's real similar to how I feel about it. And I know a lot of what I see out there is that there's, you know, it's a, it's a complex issue that, that we're creating the people that do these kinds of things. And um, it seems like a lot of the politicians and a lot of people don't even aren't willing to have even the honest um, discussion as to, okay, we do have this problem. It seems like um, a, a, at least a certain political party anyway and certain groups want to just, just pound on the gun thing all the time instead of addressing the, you know, what could be actually causing this. What were, what's kind of your experience in that or, you know, when you've been doing the things that you're doing, are you, are you running into that kind of unwillingness to actually address what could be the real causes of it? Well, 100 percent. I mean, I think half the country feels like it's a gun problem. And so what they want to do is um, they're uncomfortable with guns or they don't like guns or they're unfamiliar with guns or they don't think you and I need guns. And so their solution, everything is to place additional restrictions on Second Amendment rights in the hopes that restricting freedom will somehow make them safer. And when you understand the causes, particularly for these school shootings, but quite frankly, for a lot of other things, right? You can look at gang violence. You can look at suicides. They all have their sort of different root causes. The root causes of school school shootings are not Second Amendment freedoms. They're, in fact, troubled, usually teenagers or, uh, or you know, young adults that have uh, um, a grievance, and they feel like they need to go down a path that what what the Secret Service, and I can go into this whole um, issue around the Secret Service and the work they've done on school safety, but they go down this pathway to violence. And when they make that decision, it doesn't really matter what the weapon is. Now, a lot of them will pick a gun because guns are relatively easy to, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're prevalent. People have them at home or they have access to them. But we see examples of school violence where knives are used, where 
you know, uh, automobiles are used, where attacks, you know, happen in other, you know, explosives have been used. So um, the focus, to put the focus solely on the weapon that's used to perpetrate the attack misses the whole point and really doesn't get at the heart of how do we prevent these from happening. I mean, short of repealing the Second Amendment and taking everyone's guns away, right, there are there are other solutions to this. And that's what the gun control folks don't – they don't want to have that conversation. They don't want to talk about the other solutions because they look at – unfortunately, it makes me angry as a father who lost his daughter – makes me angry that they want to use a tragedy, my tragedy, my daughter's killing, to put forward their political uh, agenda and their their views on the Second Amendment. And so I stood up along with some of the other Parkland families, and there's others from some of these other tragedies, and we said enough is enough. Guns are not the problem. There There are other root causes here, and we need to work together to find those solutions. So Ryan, then, so based on um, some of the things you've learned, what do you think about um, you know the idea of the the gun free zones that we have at schools and allowing or not allowing people to defend themselves if they're um, in p- places like that? How do you feel like that plays into things? The, the most dangerous place in America is a gun free zone. It's just mm. you know the the idea that we that we advertise to a potential attacker that everyone in this area is disarmed. So go ahead and make your attack. Plan your attack here because you'll meet little or no resistance because everybody's disarmed. What we've done in Florida is we've gone, we've done the reverse. We've put a, what we call, you know, school resource officer or school deputy in every school. We've also instituted what's called the guardian program. So school staff can be trained to carry a firearm on campus and they're another layer of protection so we actually have not just one good guy with a gun we have multiple good people with guns on campus and they're trained and they're ready to stop an attacker should one start we hope it never gets there and there's a lot of things we do on the prevention side to keep it from even getting to that horrible you know tragic um, attack but if one starts, we're going to stop it as quickly as possible, and we're going to use lethal force. The way we came to that conclusion, quite, quite for me, it was a very, I'll never forget the moment. I, I sit on the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission. We were tasked with investigating what happened and why it happened. And I'll never forget, we watched the video. Now, again, I didn't, uh, I, we didn't have video in the classrooms. We had video in the hallways, and there was a number of, students and teachers that were killed in the hallway. And we had one particular teacher that was an army veteran and he was well-trained with firearms. He was a second amendment supporter and he carried, but he wasn't allowed to carry at school. And I watched that video and he was executed by that killer. And if he had had the ability to defend himself that day, that attack would have stopped and he would have saved probably a dozen lives. Um, And so I looked at that video and I said, what right do I have to tell somebody else that they can't defend themselves just because they choose to work in a school? And so we've made changes in Florida to allow for that to, you know, allow, allow for teachers and others to carry. And we've got a great training program called the Guardian Program that allows them to do that. And I think would-be attackers know if you come into a school in the state of Florida you will meet armed resistance, and you you are going to lose. And so, um, hopefully, that's deterred and prevented a number of attacks. See, and you would, and you would hope that would be common sense. And you're you're fortunate in Florida in that you've got political leaders that are willing to talk about that and reach that conclusion. Here in California, we have the opposite where superintendents and school boards used to have the authority to make exceptions for people to be able to carry uh, um, on campus. And uh, our governor out here in, I think I believe, 2017 uh, took that right away from them, so made us even more defenseless out here. So we seem to be going in the opposite direction. Yeah, and I would say what moral right does, you, does the governor or the legislature have to tell somebody that just because they choose to work in a school that they can't they they lose the right to defend themselves. It doesn't make any sense, and we should stop doing it. We shouldn't allow the gun control activists 
to drive that kind of policy in our state. So, Brian, that's powerful. You know, I, I didn't realize that, the, that this, this gentleman in the hallway, that was his circumstance. That was his, his, his situation that he was in. And I'm glad that you're putting that out there because I didn't realize that was the reality of, of that particular situation. Could have, changed, that's, that's, could have changed everything. That breaks my heart. Well, yeah. there and, were a couple of a couple of opportunities for staff to intervene, mm-hmm. uh, and un- but unfortunately they were disarmed, and so they had no ability to stand up to the attacker. So this law probably went through rather quickly, or did you have a lot of op- opposition? So we got the first bill in Florida passed within three weeks of the tragedy. Wow! So we had, uh, uh, and, and again, it was bipartisan legislation at that point that allowed for us to begin the process of securing schools in the state of Florida. And I'm proud to say that every year for the past five years, there's been a new school safety bill and additional funding. We're now well over a billion dollars that we've spent on on hardening schools and preventing these kinds of tragedies in Florida. Wow. Well, you know what? Got to put it in your daughter's name. I mean, because everything happens for a reason. And, you know, like I say, our hearts and prayers go out to you, but you're doing so much good in her name. Keep it up, and we'll talk to you down the road. Hey, have you ever wanted to get a pilot's license? Here here in San Diego, pilots can fly almost every day, which makes San Diego one of the best places to learn how to fly in the world. And if we got a place for you, San Diego Flight Training International, they can check out the deals. Just for gun owner radio listeners, all I have to do is mention it. One hour ground uh, school, one hour of flight with an instructor. Yep, you get to fly. Normally, that's a $400 bill, but you'll get it for $350. Getting started is super easy. Call 858-569-1822. Learn to fly with SDFTI. 858-569-1822. And don't forget, SDFTI is hosting a CCW seminar on May 30th. So you need to learn how to get your CCW permit in San Diego. And that sounds like tomorrow. That's Tuesday, and that's hosted by yours truly. That's today. Today's the 28th. <laughs> all day long. Oh, yeah. 28th. Yep, 28th all day long. Don't mind me. Tuesday. Oh, you're hosting it? I'm hosting it. Uh, did you bring cookies? No. Oh, man. You don't bring cookies to your CCW yeah, seminars? Okay. I always CC... serve cookies and beer at mine. Yeah. Yeah. Cookies yeah. and beer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, what do you expect, right? That's how he gets them to go. He bribes them with cookies and beer. I know. That's the kind of guy he is. Well, Michael already took up the pizza thing. I couldn't do that again, so something else. Pizza's at monthly meetings, though. We don't do that at CCW seminars. Right. That's why I said I had to try something else. So Yeah. So cookies, cookies and, beer. and beer. Come on. How could you not like cookies and beer? Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know about dipping them. No, I'm you saying dip? you're enticing them like here's a shiny oh, object. I was going to say. I would, I would dip. I was going to say, would you <laughs> dip <laughs> a cookie and beer? No. No. Well, you don't know what Ooh. kind of beer it might be. That's right. I don't know what kind of cookies they are. You know, it's Chocolate uh, chip. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate See, there chip we go. We're talking yeah, with a nice porter or stout. I hey, think that would dip well. We're talking food again. You know, we've been <laughs> Dave's told. Dave's hungry. No, but we've been told not to do that because Mike's the one that starts it. But and Mike's we, not here. I know. That's why we're using him as an excuse. Mike posted something on Facebook the other day, too. I don't know if you saw that. It was, it was he was disgusting. eating, like, what was it, like cottage Ma- cheese? It looked like mashed cottage potatoes. Cheese. Cottage, cottage cheese and cottage ketchup. Cheese. Cottage cheese and ketchup. I thought it was mashed that's potatoes. Gross. Oh, oh, that's not, yeah. That's Have not you better. ever had cottage cheese and ketchup? No. It sounds disgusting. No, 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 no. Why would have you? I've had it. It's not quite <laughs> as bad as you would think. And I have not seen anybody in my life ever do that. And wouldn't you know, it'd be the big guy. So then that's the big debate. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you? I was, yeah, it's from people that eat Denny's spaghetti. Right? Yeah, I know. So, well, what can I say? This with, now you being some Pineapple on pizza is great. I, yeah. I, I don't think I'd try the ketchup thing. But no. I th- when I used to hey. bartend down in Old Town, yeah. um, Old Town Mix had a really great um, – Cheeseburger, yeah, and they used to serve it with the uh, the big steak fries. I, I got to go down and see if they still do uh, this. Yeah, I love those steak but um, and the the fries are great because they fry them in the same oil they're frying the chips in. Yeah, but um, one of my regular customers used to get a side of Thousand Island dressing and dip the fries in that, and yeah. I thought, God, it sounds disgusting. And oh, I tried no. it one day. It's fantastic. Oh, no. It's really good. You got to do barbecue sauce and ranch. That's a nice that's combination. Good. That's good, too. That's mm-hmm. good, too. You ever had Tabasco and clam chowder? Oh, dude. You've got to put at least three or four <laughs> droplets in clam chowder. 
No, I put bacon in my clam chowder. Well, no, I, uh, I'm not. Ar- How could you? Who do you know that doesn't eat bacon? We'll get I the mean, guns. Some... We'll get the guns eventually, right? Right. Guns. Who cares about <laughs> guns? I'm talking, and probably one of the best places to get that is at World Famous down mm-hmm. Pacific Beach. Yep. With their baguettes. <sighs> All right, so we're talking about guns, Joe. What yeah, that's well, the other guy I used to bartend with too. Is the guy that owns World Famous. So. Oh, does he really? Friend. Yeah, Dieter May. No good, uh, kidding. You used to bartend with him. Yeah, I, I used to tease him because he started there at Old Town, like a couple of months after I started there. So he did a training shift with me. So I always used to tell people, "Yeah, I trained Dieter. He had much more <laughs> experience than I had back then." But but I got there first. So yeah, I got, got there. Yeah, but look where he's at now. Yeah, look at that. He's got an ocean. Great view. restaurant. Beautiful restaurant. Great, yeah. great food. Good people. So what do you want to talk about now? We're talking about lies. Deception. You know, we're talking hey, about political lies. Oh, yeah, we're talking about political lies. Like that's never happened mm. in the government. People, they don't can lie I ask to a us. Question? Can I ask a question? How can the FBI director refuse to do what Congress asked for? Yeah, you would think. How uh, can you do that? Well, we Someone used to have to rules. We apparently don't have rules anymore. But how anymore. can you do you that? To, you, That'd be like if my if I was your boss and mm-hmm. I said, "All right, Alicia, I need you to turn in a report that you had last week." No, no. Mm-hmm. Well, if you said it, I'd probably just say, "Okay, <laughs> I just go do something else." Yeah, so but I don't understand how that. I, I just it, none of it makes sense. Well, we have a government that's slightly out of control. Would you think? You think? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wait, they're out of control. Going. I think so. Unheard of. Were they in? But well, you know, and I hate to say it, I'm almost going to pull the the Michael Schwartz card. Uh-oh. And say both sides are almost as bad. I mean, one's not one's a little bit better than the other, but yeah, I think they're different flavors of bad. Yeah, but yeah, I think you're right. One's bad in our in our our benefit. The other one's bad in the other guys' benefit. But we we had started talking about that. Uh, the thing about the uh, the uh, the fibbing, <laughs> I guess, with uh, government and the media. Rich and I were talking about this before the show, and um, I was there too. Oh, so I'm sorry. That's right. Rich and Desi and I were talking about this before the show. And, um, you know, we we're talking about uh, all the misinformation because we were talking about Ryan Petty being on the show. Right. And, um, you know, Ryan, and th- he expressed it too when he was here a few minutes ago, um, about, you know, the gun's not the problem. Mm-hmm. And he says the problems are much more complex. And that's what we were talking about down there. And it's, you know, it's unfortunate that, that we – our political leaders in our society is such right now that we can't even have the discussion about it. Because what we were talking about downstairs was um, even if you want, you know, what, what's happening now, and we've always had guns and we've always had that kind of stuff, but we're having more of these kinds of shootings and things like that um, nowadays because we're creating more people that do that. Um, and there's a lot of things that go into that. It's, you know, part of it's a mental health thing, obviously, but I mean, there's a lot of drugs prescription and otherwise are involved with little kids, you know, from the time they're, they're very young. I mean, we, um, you know, we do a lot more with, um, with drugging kids where, you know, when we were growing up, it was like, get outside and play, you know, now it's, you, you trap them inside and then because they're fidgety and nervous, okay, well maybe we need to drug them up uh, to get away from that. And they're not really sure. I don't think the effects on, you know, kids that are brains that are just growing and things like that. But there's, there's that aspect of it. It's what we do in our society, our social media, um, the things that I just heard a stat this morning, they were talking about, um, pornography and kids and they say on average here in the United States, um, a uh, kid is exposed to that for the first time at the on average at 11 years old, and you know there's a lot of different things like that that are going that go on that go into this that create you know these situations that we have, and even if we had politicians and we had our society that really wanted to address these things, um, it would still be a challenging thing to address because there's so much that goes into it. But instead of you know wanting to address it, what we have now is one side just jumps on the guns, no matter what. And you know, like Ryan it's was the saying, it's, it's, it's well, easy. well, it's easy, but it, it serves their purpose because, like we're saying too, these these people aren't stupid. I mean, what, there there are some you could argue that are stupid, but no, most of them are not. Mm-hmm. You can't say Gavin Newsom. You could say a bunch of stuff about him, but he is not stupid. And he knows when he's lying and he knows when he's misleading people. And like we were talking about the gun statistics, right? The, um, there's a real big one out there um, 
they talk about mass shootings in the country. So uh, by some counts, and you could see this on CNN, on MSNBC, the president quotes these numbers, um, 253 mass shootings in the country since uh, the beginning of the year, since January. Where that number comes from, because I tracked this down last week or the week before when I heard it, mm -hmm. and um, where it comes from is the Gun Violence Archive, which is a left-wing kind of database um, organization. And, um, you know, I took a look at it, and they have uh, a lot of data on there, and it's set up really nicely, and they are up front. They'll tell you, you know, you could look at the source and everything for each of the things they're mentioning. Um, but if you look at I started looking at it, and they've got a nice, you know, table there. And I'm looking at these things they're calling mass shootings, and I'm seeing um, – I'm looking at fatalities and I'm seeing zeros in the columns. And it's like, well, wait a minute, it's a mass shooting. There's no fatalities. And I went further and, you know, they that what they've done is they've changed the definition. I was going to say, what's the definition of right. uh, well, mass the, shooting? According to the FBI, a, more mass, than one bullet. a mass shooting is four or more people, not including the shooter, are killed at a mass shooting. That, that's how the FBI has always defined that. But killed, though. Killed is yeah. what the FBI says. Okay. This gun violence archive uh, has changed that definition to apparently shot because I couldn't find any on there uh. where nobody was even shot. But there was a lot of them where nobody was killed. So I went through and, and counted up all the out of their 253 that they had on there. said, okay, how many meet the FBI definition? So 15 out of 253. So that's the kind of misinformation because when right. you tell people – when you say, okay, 253 mass shootings, okay, it's like, wow, that, you know, people are concerned with that. And the other thing, too, is when they talk about mass shootings, right, if somebody tells you, hey, we had a mass shooting yesterday, what comes to your mind if you're a normal, rational adult, you're thinking, okay, someone went and shot a bunch of strangers right. in a mall or and something. and more than one. And this is not what they're they, – they include gang shootings. They include all this different stuff. And it's it's intentionally misleading, and it's sure. it's unfortunate because we can't you can't have a good discussion. Um, you know, if you look at even the FBI statistics, when they um, the FBI has their Uniform Crime Index, I think it's what it's called, great database with information. They break crimes, they break it down by crime, by city, by state, and you can get a lot of information off of there. And if you look at that um, through, I think, 2019 was the last good year because they've changed things now and it's a lot harder to use. Um, but if you look at that, if you look at uh, people that were killed, for instance, uh, with rifles or uh, by, by people using rifles, it's the number is like less than 500, I think, um, for a year. If you look at the number of people killed by other people with their bare hands and feet, it's over a thousand. It's like twelve hundred or so typically. Wow. It's it comes it's higher and lower different years. But I mean that's the kind of thing. And then there's this big push. We have to get rid of AR style uh, mm -hmm. rifles because you know they're killing everybody. Well, no, they're not. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, and it won't do anything. Which is what they found when was it during President Clinton? I think when they banned. Um, the AR style rifles for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And even Congress in their own study looked and, that, and wasn't it didn't that a, do anything. Wasn't that a Joe Biden, a law that he put in Joe, yeah. for 10 years? Yeah, he, he claims credit for it. Well, I, of course. I, of course I can't does. believe, I don't know. But he also <laughs> said that it, it, it you know, cut down gun right. butt, and but he, it know, he knows that's not true. But it's, but that, yeah. And again, and that was Congress that looked at that. And right. they did a study and said, so, well, no, it didn't do anything. So yeah, it's because okay it's to not, lie. So it's well, okay to lie. And it's unfortunate because now we can't really solve the thing yeah. or address the thing if we're not going to talk about it. We're not Makes speaking the same language. Hey, have you ever wanted to... No, I already did that. <laughs> no, I didn't either. I must have doubled... Aren't you going to read about Inland Empire? No, no, no. No? no. Oh, it's too far. Yeah, Orange County. <laughs> for some reason, I read I have 445, or so let's see. See what I happens when they don't one. when they don't staple these I sheets together? You skipped this one. Huh? You skipped you skip the skip 430. That one. Orange County Gun Hunters dedicated to preserve and restore Orange County and defend and defend self-defense rights. And if you live in Orange County and want to defend and restore the Second Amendment, you need to join OCGunOwners.com. Orange County Gun Owners is the organization to help get more pro-Second Amendment officials elected. Become a member today, OCGunOwners.com. All right, before you fall asleep, <laughs> I seen you over there yawning. Are we keeping you up? I had a feeling. All right, so what are we talking about this so segment? We have some lucky winners for some awesome things. Yahoo. And announce Yahoo. those. All right, so today, so we're going so to start with this subscribe and win. So those who subscribe uh, to our email list.
get entered into a drawing. We have a winner. Our winner this week is Jahink Jahinkle one. I'm assuming that's the username. Profile name. There you go. Jahinkle one. Uh, Rich will reach out to you to claim your prize. We uh, next up we have a member who won free training, and that free training is going to be coming from Mike Desargo. So this is a pretty awesome prize. I'm pretty jealous. Mike is from Stronghold Dynamic, and the winner for the Stronghold Dynamics Defensive Shooting Fundamentals, which is going to be held June 3rd, is Kurt Bantle. Yeah. Kurt Bantle. If you would like to register for the drawing for upcoming trainings that we'll be giving out in the future, you're going to go ahead and register at gunownersradio.com slash training, the number four members. Maybe you'll be the, uh, the next lucky winner. Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Pretty awesome. All right. Next up, uh, for those of you that don't know, if you've been hit under a rock, we have a gun show coming up June 3rd and 4th. Those who go on our website uh, can flood a little form. They can enter to win some tickets. And we have a couple winners that we're going to announce for that as well. So we have a couple winners. We have Ren Atienza, Michael Torgerson, Marco Vargas. Looks to me like some of you guys won't be on radio because it's June 3rd and 4th. June 3rd and 4th. I'll be here. Someone will be here. Someone Someone will be here. here. I'll be here. Don't worry, we won't leave you by yourself. Well, that doesn't make a difference to me. I can handle it. I'll just talk talk, talk about food. We can Uber eat some spaghetti. Yeah, we can Uber (laughs) eat From Denny's just for Joe. (laughs) I want cottage cheese and ketchup. Oh, oh, Dave. Come on, folks. We had to do a... Brendan, would you eat cottage cheese with ketchup on it? No. (laughs) You'll eat anything. I mean, Except that. <laughs> Except that. I don't even think my pugs would eat that. Yes, they would. I, I haven't know. seen a pug turn anything down of you. Uh, no, I haven't. But God, you mentioned That it. might be the first. First time for everything. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's going to be a pretty cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. Pretty cool a lot gig. Of fun. We're not done with winners, though. Oh, we got more up. winners. We got more, keep more it up. Things, more things. All right, so we have some announcements for some winners. We had a Santee Street Fair, and uh, we have some a winner for a free membership. From that street fair drawing is going to be David Ross. David Ross. Congratulations, Congratulations, David. David. And we'll reach out. Rich will reach out to you. All right. Next up, we have a winner of the Speed Loading Challenge. It was a female, and she gets one hour free range time with Blake, which is one of our uh, uh, Not Me San Diego mentors. And uh, the winner is going to be... Nicole Chandler Cothran. Excellent. You know, you know her. <laughs> no, but Blake is a tabletop leave. He is not an ambassador, unless he He's wants to not, put not on an ambassador. A... I meant a mentor. Oh, I'm yes, mentor. He is a mentor. Did I say ambassador? Like, Sorry. Unless he wants to identify as a <laughs> female, look, put on a wig. Look of and he oh, we're not going there. Mentor. We're not going to Walmart. Mentor was what I intended to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right. And we have on the flip side of that, we got the male winner who gets one hour free range time at Poway Weapons and Gear. Winner is. Jake Donan. Jake Donan. Ooh. We're going to need a new drum to keep this up. <laughs> Break that drum. Got so, Rich will, so winners, Rich will be reaching out to you to claim your prizes. Congratulations. Right. So how do you get? How do you win all this stuff? So you go to a tabletop. Yeah. And we always have some kind of contest now going on at tabletop. So mm-hmm. we like to entice people to come and either volunteer sure. or stop have by our booths and say hi to our volunteers. It's just a way for us to drive. You give back a little bit. Exactly. Cool. Have a little bit of fun. So yeah, this tabletop was at the Santee Street Fair. How was that? Who went? Anybody go? I was not able to make it. I was not able to make it either. No, nah, not me. Yeah. What was the, uh, the speed loading contest, though? Yeah. So yeah. How did I'm that go? curious as well. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know. I can imagine. Was? You know, I can only imagine just a Are bunch of people that? sitting there. I can load pretty quick, yeah. I have, you? Who can you load know how guitar- the fastest? You know how guitarists build up calluses from yeah. you know working the strings? I've got those calluses in my thumbs. I'm good. What about so, you? Or you use a machine. Um no, actually, now because I'm using well, because the the 15 round <laughs> magazines are easier than the 10 round magazine. 10 round magazines oh. are tough. Seven, what is it? Eight, nine, and ten oh, are yeah. tough. What's fun? Uh, you know, I'll be working with people, and it's kind of cute. They'll be, you know, they'll be loading, and then they'll just all they'll proclaim. You know, what? five is good. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you start what do you to get think that of resistance. those auto loaders? Some are great. Some are not so great. It depends on which one you're talking about. The Up Lula seems to be the most popular. That's one um, I love to use. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I, t- I was um, so happy when I saw that because yeah. the first time I saw that was when I was shooting matches and yeah. I'm reloading these magazines, oh, yeah. shooting production, so 10-round magazines. Mm-hmm. And I saw somebody one of those. I said, oh, I got to have that. Get one. Oh, and I, wow. by the way, anybody's looking or in the market for one, highly recommend you don't go with black. 
They come in different colors. It will get lost. It's too easy to lose. You'll spend time digging for it. You won't see it. Yeah, and get it won't color. get returned if you leave yeah, it at the no. range. I've got, I've got like the pink three one. people. Have left. Well, nothing you have is a normal color. <laughs> no, but I've yeah. got some people have left at the range, and they yeah. just added to my collection. Oh, so but, if you're missing one, I might have it. <laughs> Huh, shooting alongside Desi. So what makes it so... so? It's just easy to hey, use. Loader. It's efficient. There's other loaders that I've tried that work half the time, half the time they don't. It's almost more challenging to use them than it is just to hand load sometimes with those other ones. Glock There's some cheap gives you one in your... Whenever you buy your Glock, Glock and I don't like one? that one. No. It's awful. I mean, it's free. There's value to free, right? right. But, you know, and I'll show people how to use them, but they are... I don't care for them. I can't tell how many times I've used that Glock loader and I'll get around that goes... Ping! And it shoots across the room. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's a trick to doing it, and it's it's just not my, you know, it's not Unless my natural Unless you do talent. it every day, every day, every day, every day. I'd rather hand load. Yeah. Well, I know I've watched people with those long ones that you, you yes. scoop up a whole bunch of rounds, and then yeah. you just push it all in at the same time, and it's it seems like it works as often as it doesn't work. Right, right. Exactly. And, uh, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're entertaining to yeah. watch, but uh, I haven't seen any consistently <laughs> work yet. Right. Yep, the upload is the only great one that I've seen. There was one, I don't recall the name of it. It almost has like uh, like scissor scissor finger holds in it. Oh, I've seen that. And I yeah. don't recall the name of it. That one, what it is, is I'm used to the upload list so that the hand mechanics, you know, the muscle memory, I've got that down for the upload. This other one that looks almost like a scissor um, has a, a different stru- a different method or technique that I'm not quite used to. However, watching people that know how to do it, that they, they did it really well. Mm-hmm. And I don't recall the name of that one, though. Mm-hmm. But that one was decent. Yeah, do you like Mike? Just hire somebody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you have a, a loader. It's like loader. Your, your magazine bearer. <laughs> exactly. That way he doesn't uh, have to mess with it. Well, I know. I, could, I learned that lesson um, when I did the gas match um, out at Gunsight last uh, last year. The um, I decided to shoot it with a 1911 just for tradition because that's a big 1911 school there. So everybody has a 1911. So I thought, okay, just for the sake of tradition, I'll do it. And, uh, and I did it once. I, I won't be doing it again. But... Um, <laughs> But, you know, there's there's a lot of math involved. Managing the stages with your eight-round magazine mm-hmm. uh, is challenging. But the other thing I, I completely did not know or just didn't even think of is that a 45 round is about twice as heavy as a 9-millimeter oh, yeah. round. And you're lugging around about 300 of them out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought, okay, that I for sure won't be doing this one again <laughs> unless I have a, a bearer. Get a, get a roadie. A yeah. bearer. Everybody's got to have a bearer, I would think. You know? I mean, come on. But trying to get Nina to do that this year, though. So are you uh, going to get her? To, she's she a little, is. She's she signed. You better up for, be her bearer. She signed up for the gas match. Yeah. Well, we won't be shooting forty-five. We'll oh, be shooting nine millimeter. But, she's really um, getting into this. She is. She's doing really well uh, out there too. Because the whole the whole first, you know, I told you a story, right? The uh, she did the women on target, mm-hmm. and she had fun. And the women on target. Um, and this you know, woman's how tall? Uh, five, oh, no, what? five, five, one and a quarter. She always five, claims one the quarter. quarter. Yeah, Don't she forget claims that quarter. the quarter inch. I know, for whatever reason, she wants to be tall. <laughs> Doesn't weigh nothing, but yet Mm-mm. she is just taking on a sport that most people. Well, we found do. out about that too, because uh, from the women on target, she was raving about, because the women on target, they get to shoot handguns and they spend an hour with shotguns and an hour with rifle. And she got to shoot a pistol caliber carbine. So she's raving about this. So I thought, and I did the one thing when you were talking about gifts, mm-hmm. right? I, I did the <laughs> one violation. You should, never oh, buy, you, you should never buy somebody a gun. But um, I knew she was raving, you know, unless they, unless you know exactly what it is they want. Right. But um, well, she is raving. Well, and, and I got her one for Christmas. I got a little uh, Ruger mm-hmm. uh, PCC gun and she loves it. So then she was asking, she said, okay, is there, does somebody have a class? And I looked and well, gun sites got one. Okay. I'll sign up. And I'm thinking, okay, this is, this is five days of shooting eight hours a day. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking this is going to be either really good or really bad. <laughs> you know, it's like for a new shooter, that's a lot. That's a I'm lot. thinking, okay, it's, mm-hmm. it may turn her off to it forever. But she went out and she loved it. But one of the things she found out was the Ruger is a bit heavy for her. Because mm. at the range, you know, she'll fill up three or four magazines. She'll shoot. She'll put the gun mm-hmm. down. She'll fill up magazines again. Shoot. Yeah. Out there, even with the um, the sling, you're still, it's just up and down. You're yeah. shooting the whole time. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get her a lighter option or whatever. But she had, she was a real trooper. She had so much fun out there. 
that she said, okay, I want to take their pistol class, their handgun class. So we did that this last March, and she loved that, and it was great. So now she's shooting. Wow. And um, so so far, because, you know, we're limited with this goofy roster out right. here. Right. Of, course, roster. of course, of course, the guns she likes are not on the roster. Uh, of course. But um, she's, uh, she's developing an attachment now to my Glock 34. So she's been doing really, really well with that. How does so that far. fit her hand? It does. Well, you know, it's interesting because before when she tried the Glock, mm-hmm. now it doesn't fit. Mm-hmm. Now she's tried it, and I don't know if she's more comfortable because she rented the, um, what was it, a SIG uh, P320s, which she rented mm-hmm. out there for the week. Mm-hmm. And uh, since then, I don't know if she's just more comfortable with the shooting, right? but she's saying, no, you know what, it's fitting. So oh. cool. Hey, no argument. It's bad enough you got to buy double <laughs> ammo. <laughs> You don't have to buy. I'm learning that gun. lesson too at the reloading. Time yeah, we'll talk about that. Next I was time just going to get gonna, her the three gun. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. Inland Empire gun owners strive to be the ounce profession in the fight for your gun rights. How do they do it? They'll do it by fundraising and getting local pro gun candidates selected. Become a member today. Go to iegunowners.com/slash/join and join the growing group number of responsible gun owners stepping up to defend our Second Amendment right. That's iegunowners.com. Slash joint. See, don't you hate it when they put it on the front and the back? I don't know. They, they need to staple these things. Is no, no. <laughs> the, the problem, job today. If you only do one side at a time, it's easy to flip. But when you got it on both sides, I think he First does. World he does it on purpose. Oh, okay, so first off here, hold on. I gotta <laughs> defend here, it myself. here it comes. I got to defend myself. Yeah, you go right ahead. Oh, oh okay, good. Uh, I, I was told by... Uh, okay, never mind. I, I, I got no excuse, actually. No, <laughs> no you like thought. doing it because you like it when okay, we get well, off. Yeah, I do like saving the planet. The, I the knew you were going to yeah. say that. One piece of paper at a time. That's right. I exactly. Know. I'll reuse these papers again somehow by making all paper right. planes or something. All right, so know. we did all the winners. What are we doing now? <laughs> Gun under symposium. Oh, we're doing the yeah. symposium now. Is yeah. that is that something we should all go to? Absolutely. And why are we calling it a symposium? Well, the symposium is just going to be the speaking and the ah. the, the the connection point. Uh, that's not the entire show. There's What's, going to be your a traditional gun show setup with all the all the things that you want to buy and okay. look at. The but trinkets. there's also going to be an education God. area, an opportunity to to kind of get together and to learn some things. Hey, I don't think I heard anything in the uh, the the schedule or not me SD. No, mm-hmm. we'll, you... be, we'll be there. Well, you have a booth. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we're actually doing a booth this year at the gun show. What are you talking about? You never had the gun show before. I mean, this is our first gun San show. San Diego County Gun Owners has. I We've know. been at every gun show in the past. No, always... but I'm just saying, I'm surprised they don't have you standing up there talking. I mean, I can. I always make an appearance, and then I can talk about not me, SD. <laughs> I was going to say, it's go. your passion. It is. So they're going to have guns here? I sure hope so. Ammo, maybe. Ammo. I oh, sure ammo. Boy, so there's a thought. We, you know, it's a, it's a whole different group hosting it. So don't go expecting it to be the Just same. Just go there and have the fun. Of Crossroads app. It, it, it go it, enjoy it for what it is, and let's support it. And I'm just thankful. And it's more than one day, right? Two, Two days. days. Yep, okay, Saturday, so go Sunday. the first day, and you go. Mm-hmm. Oh shoot, they do have stuff I want, and mm-hmm. come back. Absolutely. Are you going, Joe? No, no, I won't be there. But where are you going? Huh? Well, I did have a class. That's why I was going to do that, and then I got. The, the class got canceled, and then I got volunteered in the other stuff. Oh, and so. it's not Volunteer. gun-related? So uh, what is that? Not not, not gun-related? Not gun-related stuff. Ah, no. Don't you love the wife? But uh, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I four, 41 this. years coming up here in August. Wow. Oh, 41 yeah, years. Yeah, seems wow. longer, but yeah. Man, she needs it. She, she <laughs> should, I hope she's uh, not listening. She should get an award. Yeah, she's what heard that. that. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you, you wouldn't know what to do without her, let me tell you. No, I, I definitely <laughs> married up, that's yeah, for sure. she did. So the symposium, now this is the first one? This is the first one put on by this group. Okay, and who are, do you know anything about this group? It's, so we had them on a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, they're a group out of Arizona, so they are not California natives, but I think that that gives them an upper edge. You think that's a positive? I, I agree. I think so. Because I think, well, it seems to me like it'd be, they'd be more apt to run into a lot more problems. Well, they, they, they said they had some hoops they had to jump through. They had some permit issues. They, you know, they're, they're being compliant with everything they've been asked to do. And uh, it, was, it was a struggle, and uh, they were able to come through and get it done. And Lisa came through, and they're being able mm-hmm. to get it done. Oh, no, when no. Was lot, we haven't had a gun show since what, before COVID? Yeah. Before COVID. Before yeah. COVID. Yeah. yeah, so that's been at least three years since we've had one in San Diego. Kind of yeah. reminds you of the Elon Musk. Let's <laughs> blow the rocket up and then see you know, what we need to do next time. Mm-hmm. So their expectations probably are not as high as we would like them to be. 
Because they never know. I mean, you just don't know what the, what the repercussions are. Well, they'll learn from this one, too. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, that, yeah. And that's so this, good. Is, this is the Elon this is Musk the trial. blow right. up the, the rocket yep. to see what we need to fix on the next one. So you almost give up, well, in this case, $3 million, $300 million. But in their case, this is going to be a good learning curve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. At least uh, somebody's out here doing it now, which Absolutely. is good. We've, and, we've and been was, asking for a gun show. Yeah, you know, I know. But I'm starting to see, just like our guest we just had on, Mr. Petty, you know, we're starting to see people, unfortunately, that have experienced the loss of a child come out, and you would think that they would come out against guns. I mean, that's your first initial reaction. Well, that's the easy response. It yeah. is the easy response. Blame mm-hmm. the gun. But I think that there's, you know, when they lose a child, they don't snap the judgment. They dig into it. They mm-hmm. want to know what caused this. Why did I lose my child? And when they, when you really knock all the dust off of it, you know the truth is pretty evident. Well, and I, and I think too with him and and Andrew Pollock was yeah. the same one who lost his daughter yeah. at that shooting. Um, you know, I, I think when you're okay, you go through something, and I can't imagine what yeah, that would be like. Can't but imagine. you go through something like that, and okay, I'm going to make something positive out of it. Right. So you don't want to go, okay, in their case, all right, I want to see if I can do something and maybe influence things or change things so that other people maybe don't have to go through what I went through. So if you take that approach to it, it's got to be really difficult to go out and, okay, I'm just going to ignore the reality and are, go blame facts, guns. Facts. I'm not, yeah. And so I could see where people, um, you know, like uh, Ryan Petty and Andrew Pollock are going to look at it and say, okay, I'm not, if we're going to do this, we're going to be yeah. legitimate about it. Otherwise, and, no one will take you seriously. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's deeper than that, I think. It's, I mean, if you're doing this for your daughter, you know, that you lost or your child that you mm-hmm. lost, okay, mm-hmm. I want to make this something real and I want to try to do something with that. And, you know, anybody really, if you want to honestly look at it, and I, you know, to to blame the gun on that, it's just it's just goofy. You know, you're just avoiding the situation. And I shouldn't really say that. I don't want to minimize that because there are people that just don't know that genuinely believe that the gun is bad or right. guns make people do this or that. But I mean, most most reasonable people would know that. Okay, I, this can't be right. We got to look in the you know look at what's really happening. Right. Isn't that the same argument that you can make that spoons make me fat because I eat food with them? Or pencils get Fs on papers, yeah. right? <laughs> I love when I see those memes. It's like, yeah, okay, if that's the case, then here you go. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, right. My pencil failed the exam. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when you really, 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 they don't? No. Pencils don't fail exams. No. Lost that one. Well, it could be the computer now because you're typing Jeez. all your exams. Actually, I went out and bought the biggest, fattest pencils. They're triangulated. <laughs> Somebody had gave me one one time, and I've so the contractor f- pencils, the guys that well, it's, uh, no, it's not that that. on wood. Th- this was like, no, it's actually. In a in a triangle, and it's a pretty hefty pencil. But you know what man. those are for, Dave? What? Those are for teaching kindergartners how to hold the pencil properly. Is that what they're yeah. for? <laughs> they're yeah. awesome. That's the best pencil. I, you know what? It did say something about that. <laughs> but somebody had, have you ever used one? Well, I homeschool my kids. So but yeah. okay. Yeah. And don't you like those pen, pencils? Uh, I'm not a fan, but they they do work well for really? the kids. Really? I am. You do better on exams with that pen? <laughs> I have. Do they help That's you a, fail or pass their I have to test. take my driver's test coming up. I'm taking that pencil with me. That's all there is. It's your to lucky it. pencil. I know. I like those. Lucky I bought pencil. 12 of them. There you go. I don't know what I'm Because they're in a box of 12. That's why. That's like, all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah what do you, you, know, what do you we, expect? We talk about school shootings, right? And I actually, both of my sisters back home are teachers. And one of my sisters works in a neighborhood that's not exactly in a great neighborhood, right? Like, it's very low, low-income families that go to her school and I fear a, a shooting happening at her school because I understand the demographics that sure. are in her area. And so I've tried to do my best as, you know, with everything that I know that she carries pepper spray with her to class. I've taught her to be more situational aware. Like I've taught her everything that I can to try to help prep her just in case something happens. But that fear is always there. But how does she respond? She you? she 100% understands that. Like, and she knows that I know what I'm talking about because would of she what take I, it. Would she get a CCW? No. Because you can't in those schools. Yeah, but I mean, are they gun? Are your sisters gun people, or just are they they're neutral not like at least? Or me. they're not like you. They're not like me, where I'm at the range like every weekend. Uh huh. She has two young kids, so they don't really want like guns in the house. Right. Okay. But they did have a break in. Actually, happened last year where someone tried to break into their house, and they have a gun 
somewhere hidden <laughs> that they actually had to use to scare that person away. Imagine yeah. the irony behind that. Yeah. And how about trying to mm-hmm. find it? <laughs> Didn't they, I put this over they've here? They've never shot that gun. That's the thing that scares me is they uh, do have a gun in the house, but they have never shot it. Very and common. every time they come to visit, I'm like, hey, let me take you to the range. Come on, let let's go. Teach. Let's spend exactly. the day. Like, use your sister. But they don't want to go. Those. No, they don't. They want to go to SeaWorld. They'd rather do that. Let's Isn't that sad? It's terrible. Yeah, because you don't want to. See, you're thinking proactive. Right. And they're and thinking, thinking reactive. reactive. Yep. Right? Well, is there a better tool that empowers a woman to defend against an attacker than 100 pounds bigger? That's why it's so important to, for women to learn how to defend themselves with the most effective self-defense tool ever invented. For women led by women, the Not Me program is designed to help with training, purchasing a gun, and getting a concealed carry permit. And guess what? All of it's free. All you have to do is go to notmesd.org. And we've got an expert on that topic sitting right here. Hi, Des. Hi, Dave. How are you? Good. So you having fun with this program? You know, I don't... Fun is it's an interesting word to describe it. I would say I'm having a lot of empowerment with being able to empower other women. Yeah, and, but you smile a lot when you talk about it. So there's got to be some fun in there somewhere. The fun is being able to see the success of the program. There you go. And I love when... Women come up to me and say, Desi, I got my CCW because yeah, of you. Yeah. Or I was able to go through the yeah. program. And that's what makes me smile. And that's the fun is being able to see the success and hear the stories of these women coming back through it. Especially when a lot of them are scared to death of a gun going in. You and, know, what and, I, you, and you're able to change that and turn it into a smile. And they can't wait to go shoot again, mm-hmm. i.e. his wife. Even though right. she didn't go through your program. Right. But Joe actually made a comment earlier, which I thought was really interesting that we talk about a lot, is when you go into a gun shop, nine out of ten people behind that counter are men. And the way women and, of course, men are, we're built differently. Imagine that. And so the way that a man might talk about what kind of gun to get is going to be completely different than, say, what Alicia and I would recommend for a woman. Because you have to think about your hand size and the way it's going to, you know, recoil and all there's a lot of different things that come into play so a guy might just say based off of joe's point color right mm-hmm. like you need yeah. this pink gun or mm-hmm. little might, and pink yeah little and pink <laughs> or i mean for me it's a teal gun of course because i love my colored guns right but the way we talk about things are completely different and one of the biggest obstacles that we see a lot with women trying to get started with their firearms journey is knowing where to start and they're not like all of us here in the room where we have friends that we can just go ask like hey what kind of gun do you think i should get mm-hmm. or where are these resources and so not me started off as San Diego County Gunners' response to sexual assault and domestic violence in San Diego. A lot of you guys have heard about the Me Too movement, right? And so the Me Too movement became really big and powerful back in 2017. And Not Me was, you know, born in 2019. And what was interesting is I came into the picture in 2020, right? Like I was hired to work with this program when COVID hit. Because you can imagine COVID hit and people were scared. Everyone didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what their safety was like. Like no one knew what was going to happen. And so um, San Diego County gun owners saw a huge influx of inquiries within the program and needed someone to come in and help streamline things and to help, you know, build this program into, you know, the beast that it is today. And ever since, you know, I've came on board, I've been able to really kind of adapt and change this program into what it is today. And even though we started off as, you know, the response to sexual assault and domestic violence in San Diego, I would say probably one in four women that come through our program have been a victim. But I would say it's morphed more into um, just being a resource for women that want help to find training for firearms. They want help picking out that gun and they want help to get their CCW. So there's a lot of things that we can kind of break this down when we talk about the program. So let's first talk about firearms, like what we're kind of talking about. So when it comes to firearms, again, not every person is the same. What I prefer for a gun might be completely different than, say, what Joe or Alicia or even yourself, Dave, would prefer in a gun, right? So we have to really kind of break down, what are you looking for? Are you looking for home defense? Are you wanting to be able to carry it, right? And I always recommend to any of these ladies that you try the gun first, right? And our shooting socials are a great opportunity for women to kind of get their feet wet. Like, what kind of gun do they want? Do they even want to get started? And at our shooting socials, I always love when I see these brand new shooters come And I always think about this one story that happened a couple months ago where, you know, I had this lady come and she was so scared. Like you could see her every time she heard a gunshot, she would just jump. 
And, you know, I put her with one of my ambassadors, Sasha, who, you know, really worked with her and she's really patient. And so she started kind of taking through it and we just have to go, you are safe. Like nothing bad is going to happen to you today. You were in good hands. Mm -hmm. Nothing bad's going to happen. Right. And she was just so scared. And so like, I, I walked away and just kind of told her just breathe. And I came back about five minutes later and something had changed in her. And now she was getting the grouping like this on her target. Wow. And I was like, what changed? And she's like, Desi. I have a 16 year old daughter that I walk to the bus stop every day. And so I just thought about what I would do if someone tried to harm my daughter. <laughs> and she was like, it was the mama bear in me that came out. Yeah. And so I just channeled all of that energy into my shooting. Wow. And she has been back at a couple different shooting socials. Right. And yeah. she keeps working with Sasha. And so, you know, we're kind of taking her through the progress of let's just start here. And, you know, the next step she wants to do is, you know, to purchase a firearm. But the timelines for going through not me, mm -hmm. they're all different. Right. right. Like no one is the same. And it really depends on how eager they are to and continue. There's no time limit. There's no time limit to safety. Right. Right. And these women can be within the program for a year, even at most, if they want to. Right. Because it's a matter of do they want to get the training? And that ambassador stays with her until she's ready to say, Desi, I'm done. I don't need you anymore. And what I love is when those stories come back and they become ambassadors because they understand what we did for them. And now they want to give back. Sure. Right. And I think that's an amazing feeling that we get and i've had a good handful of my ambassadors yeah. become that well, and plus they're it. comfortable with all of you guys because you're now kind of part of the part of the part, uh, of, the pack. part of the pack right mm -hmm. and you know if you were a little nervous about shooting but now you're going to come back and shoot with people you know right and i think that has a lot to do with it and i'm not surprised they're not leaving i mean seriously i mean it's such a positive experience mm -hmm. it's like a fellowship it's like being in a sorority well and a lot of the ambassadors like alicia's an ambassador right like a lot of the women that mentor with the program ambassadors are all volunteers right they're very passionate about helping other women mm -hmm. and they want to see these women succeed and go through the program because when you can teach someone safety and teach someone about firearms and you can be that kind of bridging of the gap mm -hmm. that's a great feeling and that's one thing that i always talk to women when they want to become an ambassador is Think about how when you help someone, like teach them how to shoot. That's something that, again, you're empowering that woman mm -hmm. with her safety into her own hands. And that's a feeling that stays with them for the rest of their life. Right. So it's that ripple effect that we see with these women going through the program. And like, I don't know about you, Alicia, but when I'm at the range and I'm, you know, keyholing rounds, it's a great empowerment feeling. And so when you can teach someone that feeling, it's just something that you can't take away. And that's what you know, not me has become so powerful with over the past, you know, couple of years is we're helping these women take their safety back into their own hands. Okay. For right. all the rookies out there. <laughs> yes. The rookies that are out there. Keyholing Key around. Would you like to explain mm -hmm. that? Alicia, you're better at explaining right. that than I am. So it's basically hole through a hole. So it's, so it's consistency uh, and you, you hit where you aim and you're consistent. Right. I see. It's like gotcha. the Robin Hood. You get one I, arrow through the other. Exactly. First, first <laughs> yeah. thing. I just watched that the other night. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that makes sense. Earl about, Quinn? Huh? Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think about yeah. how crazy the world is these days, right? So 91% yeah. of sexual assault victims are women, right? Eight out of 10 women will become, you know, are women. Right. And this is crazy that one in three women will actually be a victim of sexual assault at some point in her lifetime. Mm -hmm. So the reason why it's thought. super scary and I'm fortunate, knock on wood, that I haven't been in that situation, right. but I practice what I preach. So if we're doing these situational awareness classes, like I'm there and I'm, you know, I might be kind of supporting the class, but I'm always taking advice and looking for something. Sure. You can always learn. You can always mm -hmm. learn something. Right. Yeah. And we have a stop the bleed class coming up in a couple of weeks that um, Brooke, who's one of my ambassadors, she's also a nurse is teaching this class. So. Uh -huh. We try to do as many classes as we can to put more tools in their tool belt to protect themselves. Right. And right. you just never know if there's going to be an accident that can happen and you might mm -hmm. need to stop the bleed, right? Like right. there's just so many situations that we can be put in. And that's where Not Me has really evolved into being just like a resource for women to be empowered, whether right. that be through Krav Maga, situational awareness, pepper spray, right? Like there's so many different types of classes that you can take to be empowered, to be your own protector. And so I want to be that gap that they know, hey, if I want more additional resources, not me is the place to go. Like our foundation's always firearms, of course. Sure. But we want to have other options for them. And there's a lot more. Don't you have a website? We do. Notmesd.org. Okay. Thought I better ask because Joe didn't know it. Joe didn't ask because he knows this by heart at this point. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to break you guys up there. Everybody was on a roll. Mm -hmm. you know, I know. You didn't get your foot in the door. <laughs> okay, get well, that you, foot you got four over. minutes. 
Oh, that's it? You're you're done with the... I'm not done. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> well, I just wanted to know if you wanted to comment on the program. No, you, I, I you, know the thing with the finger. I, you know, I can comment. I was, I was actually going to say, what are you talking about? The thing with the finger. <laughs> that's, no, that's my to rule. Radio to, talk. Yeah. Like, if gotcha, you want to gotcha, talk, gotcha, you stick your finger gotcha. out. Gotcha. Yes. All right. All right. Well, well, what more? What more? My dear. I mean, what else do you want to know? I mean, just kidding. No, so at this point... so What's the easiest way to get a hold of you? I mean, just go to notmesd.org, fill out an application. That's the easiest way to get a hold of us. How um, soon do you guys return? Calls. Typically within 40, 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Yeah. So right. I have a very quick response time. Um, if I, some, one of my ambassadors isn't reaching out, I'm always here as a resource as well, right? right? But at this point, we've had 850 women apply to the program. 850. And out of that 850, we've actually had 800 women graduate. Wow. So that means that we've helped over 800 women purchase a firearm. That's a good. Get, that's a good percentage. It's a great percentage, and I love seeing those numbers continue to grow. All right. What's the the mo- the biggest thing that they ask for, or what what's the thing that you help women with the most often? Getting their CCW, I would say. Just going through the process. Going through the process. So and they walk up, and that's exactly what they're looking. A about. lot of times on the applications, I do see that like women want to be empowered and they want to be able to carry a gun outside so the. So they they're not just nosy. They want to go the full. Monte. They mm-hmm. want to go the yep. They want to go full on and dive d- into the deep yeah, end. And yeah. I do virtual CCW seminars about every six to eight weeks. Where same thing like what we do in person. I walk them through the process, but it's a very safe place where you know it's of course just women that are here. So if they mm-hmm. need to ask questions, I mean, there's no more proof of good cause. Which when I was doing these before, that was mm-hmm. always a big question: is how do I show proof that, that I was need the this? Part. Mm-hmm. That was the hardest part. But like you had a lot of single moms that wanted to get their CCW to protect themselves and their kids and you know so it was just a different dynamic people still think you have to have that is still the biggest perception that i hear out in the wild is that people still think that you have to get your ccw but the scary part to me though is even people that have their ccw they don't train Mm -hmm. right not like they should yeah, but that should there should be some way like a, to renew it. You have to show a card with you, somebody. You, you have to shoot. Well, you, you do. do. It's have just, to do a you shoot do. Call. You do. Yeah, it's just the problem with but, that because we see that in class yeah. too. Because I'll look at a class like just mm-hmm. this last Friday or Saturday, and I I know that half of those people won't touch a gun again until for two years until they come back because your permits year. are valid for two years. And if uh-huh. all that they're doing is shooting every two years, and that's what. And I used to feel bad about that. And then, remember uh, Ulysses, right? Uh, Ursula <laughs> Williams was yeah. on the show, and you know. She was. She set me straight on that because that was my my problem. Is mm-hmm. that you know we have an obligation or something to make these people. And how do you do that? Mm-hmm. And she said they're adults. They said they're taking yeah. on this responsibility. They have a, a responsibility to learn that's this right. stuff. So that's why you know I offer the classes. I do what I can do, but mm-hmm. I can't make them do it. What's that old saying? You can take a horse to water. You can't make it drink. There you Absolutely. go. Hey, a lot of companies. Oh, ninety one six. 101.5 or 101.5. Yeah, the answer, the all answer? That, that stuff. That's it. <laughs> you well, you it. freaked me out with your story and you're not even done with it. Even done. Even a lot of punchline. You could almost, you could almost do that live. A lot of companies waste an enormous amount of money in marketing. The design is excellent. The photos are beautiful. And the website looks great, but it's just not getting customers. Why? Because you don't have the words that make people buy. But now you can fix it. That with SageTree. SageTree can help you find the words that make it easy for your customer to understand what to do and how to buy, especially from you. Stop wasting money and today give them a call. You can call or actually just go to the website. It's a lot easier. Just go to SageTree.com. That's SageTree.com. You know, it just flashed into my head when I was thinking about SageTree. The guest we had last week, mm-hmm. it turned into a one-man oh, show. Yeah, yeah. Gabe. Yeah. I mean, there was a prime example. Here's a guy who's pretty, yeah. you know, noteworthy when it comes to, you know, working out in the in the World Wide Web, and he's extremely happy. Oh, absolutely! That's right, a satisfied Sage Tree customer, and got it quicker than he had. He wasn't even the ready site. For it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he didn't yeah. have the material, the content yeah. ready. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. All right, so we already did not be. We're still talking about it, though. Well, then, rock and it roll, girl. On. It continues on. It does exactly. Continue on. It go for it. So I want to talk about a success story that we recently had because I love sharing these. And you know, over Christmas time, we were at one of our shooting socials and a lot of our shooting socials, even though we have like every other one to be like a general where men can actually attend, 90% of people who show up are always women, right? Because you have this new generation of women that are becoming gun owners. And so a lot of times, even at our general shooting socials, they are women that want to come and attend. Alicia sees that. Like we see a huge rise in new shooters being women. And I love that because it's women empowerment. That means I'm doing my job. 
But I had this individual who was out at my shooting social and she came, she shot, she brought her own gun because she already owned it. And she's like, Desi, like I'm trying to get my CCW. And I was like, all right, well, you know, just let's, let's talk a little bit more. Let's figure out what you're looking for. And she's, she kind of took me to the side and she said, look, Desi, like I've been a victim of domestic violence and my attacker is getting out soon. And I want my firearm and my CCW. So that way, if, and when he gets out, I can protect myself because I am scared out of my mind right now that whenever he gets out, he's going to come after me. I was like, okay, like this is again, why not me was born, right? It was to help women exactly like this. And so I had her go home and she submitted her application that night. And I was like, look, if you can email me once you submit your application, I can't guarantee it, but we will see what we can do to push your application ahead of the process. Right. And her typical first appointment was supposed to be a year out. We got it. So her first appointment was a month later. Right. So this is a great success story that we're talking about here. So a month later, she goes to her first appointment. She's now in her 90 day waiting period. Within 90 days, she gets her approval. And before her abuser gets out, she now has her CCW. And the amount of gratitude that I have had from this individual is un like it's un you can't really talk about that, right? Because mm -hmm. We were able to help her get her CCW and I put her with one of my female instructors that, you know, I know very well because some of these cases just need a little bit of extra handholding. And the instructor that I put her with is great because she really does take that extra time to not just put her through the eight hour class for her CCW, but she really talks them through about other ways to protect herself. Like one of the things that we don't talk about that often is actually being able to use your voice if you're being attacked, mm -hmm. right? Like use your voice, be loud, and now you have your CCW. And this individual's attacker recently got out and she messaged me there. She's like, Desi, I feel so much more confident in protecting myself because of not me and because of what you guys have done for me. But did he come see her? I don't know. But if he does. But she doesn't care because she's in a much better place. She's in a much better place. And she's taken all of my classes that we have done. She has taken my situational awareness and pepper spray class. We also did the image-based decision-making class with Dakota a couple of weeks ago. And so she has been at all of these events because she understands the resources that are now being offered to her because of not me. Mm. And she didn't know any of that was available. She didn't know before. any of that was available until she somehow stumbled upon our website. And now like she is one of our biggest advocates because of what we've done for her. But she would never have had any of that if it hadn't been for the program. And all of this kind of took place over the course of, you know, six months. So she went on, she got an ambassador. So we kind of work hand in hand. And when these special cases come up, I definitely help step in because they need a little bit of that extra hand holding, right? And we never want cost to be a prohibitor for someone to come through the program. So there are, you know, grants and scholarships that we can offer depending on the circumstances. Like we never want that to be a hindrance for someone to come through the program. Mm -hmm. And the big difference between not me and say other programs that are out there is we're not just a pamphlet, right? We're not just going to give you a flyer and say, Hey, go figure it out. Mm -hmm. Like with each person that comes to the program, they're assigned an ambassador and that ambassador's role is to kind of be that concierge service with what, what can I help you with? Mm -hmm. Some individuals are very easy where they don't take as much time. Others do take a little more TLC, right? Because of what they're looking for with the program. Yep. Like Alicia, you've been an ambassador for, mm -hmm. I don't know how long. I mean, what's your thoughts on being an ambassador and why are you volunteering your time to help me? I, so it's just, it, oh gosh, that's How a long question. you been an ambassador. So well, I came on. I initially came in back in 2019, shortly after it started. I was not able to commit the time to it long term, so I did yep. kind of have to to back out. And then I came back on board last year. Last year, yep. last year. Um, so it's it's like Desi stated. There's there's a number of women that come through. Sometimes it's just a matter of me sitting side by side with them and looking at the uh, the CCW application. Sometimes yep. I've gone with them to the gun shop just so that they can have a little bit of confidence with like, you know, I have someone with me. It's not that I'm doing anything for them or on their behalf. I'm just there as a support so that they feel a little bit better about what they're doing and they don't feel so lost. Um, as far as why I'm doing it, um, I think it's, it's, it's a great program and there's a huge need for it. If I don't do it, who's, you know, exactly. There's who, you know, not, not, not that I'm the, the greatest and the best, but if I don't do it, who will? You know, and there's, you know, like Desi stated, there's about 15 ambassadors in, currently on the roll, but we need more. 
We, we always need more. Need more. And we always need more. The thing that and happens when we see a big influx of inquiries is anytime we do media appearances, right? Like mm -hmm. anytime I've been on Key West, I, hey, I'm just saying it works. <laughs> don't have to tell me. It's free advertising, and that's the way people hear you about get us. Spikes. We do see spikes, and mm -hmm. so when we see those spikes, is when I need more ambassadors to kind of help with that spike. But the biggest problem that I see is that not enough people know about the program. Right. And so word of mouth is the biggest way we see that too, right? Like a girlfriend will come to a shooting social, hear about us, love her experience. So she kind of, you know, tells about it. But we need more people to tell about the program because it is free. It's not going to cost you anything to get that resource and that handholding through the program. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten on any other TV stations? No, I'm afraid to. <laughs> I'm afraid to go on any other um, news station because of their political allegiances. And but you allies. could handle it. I think I you could. could. I mean, here all you have to do go to their websites, and there'll be a little button to push for. Do you have a story? I always have a story to tell. I know, but wouldn't it be? I mean, how? I mean, I just all you're doing is you're offering a service. I'm offering a service you're not to the making, community. You're not mm -hmm. making an opinion. No, I'm no. not making an opinion. I'm. Talking about a resource for women out there Take that Alicia are looking for you. help. Huh? Take Alicia with you. She'll take I'll hold your hand. You'll hold my hand? <laughs> hold You'll hand. hold me, my hand through the process? But I think <laughs> it would be great if you guys both start. You know, go to 8, 10, 39, Fox, CW, and, or at least if nothing else, pitch it. And then if anybody ever says anything to you, say, well, you know, I reached out. You know, you guys didn't care about our story. Well, Dave, you have all the connections. Why well, don't you help me? Well, I can't go to any other station myself personally. So that's why uh, I, because, hmm. well, because they don't pay me. So they told me I can't go anywhere else. I went, is there totally something wrong with this picture? But I'm just saying, I think with what you, mm -hmm. oh, you know, Emily Capano? No. I sent her a Not Me SD. She's a, a report, uh, she's a news person on Fox. She drives a, uh, she drives a, what, a, a 79 Mustang. She was just on uh, Instagram shooting a flamethrower. Oh, that's fun. She was in a tank. She, I want to be in a tank. Well, you ought to see her. I mean, this girl, she's everywhere. She's, you, you know who I'm talking about? Emily. No, Capano. no, I don't. Oh, yeah. yeah. But she's on Fox? <laughs> Fox, yeah. Hmm. She's uh, on the morning show with, uh, yeah, she's really great. But she's into guns big time. Mm -hmm. So I sent Maybe her. I should reach out. I know. Uh, Emily Capano. So I. So I've come to the, the, the boring conclusion to write a letter. I write her a letter? Well, because if you write a letter and send it to Fox News, then that'll end up on the desk, and then they'll say, oh, this is for attention, Emily Capano. Then you take it to Emily Capano. She opens it, because how often does she get a letter? And I think, because if, if you could go back to New York and get on Fox 5 or Fox News, well, there's That would be beginning. national coverage. No, that would be massive coverage. Yeah, you'd be massive. I mean, you want to get the program off the ground. I mean, I could see a huge spike in that. I would love that. Yeah, <laughs> we can I, handle and it. She, and the only reason I pick her is because she's into guns. Right. She's, she's on Instagram, but trying to get through to her on Facebook and Instagram. And I—that's what everybody else does, right? But you get, can't get through to them. Get, get clogged in the. No, they act, down. they'll actually mm -hmm. tell you. I'm sorry, we can, you know this we cannot receive. So I'm thinking, okay, and I, I I'm thinking about this for a long time. I've worked on this. You've and been then, trying to help me, and I appreciate well, and that. And then I came to the brilliant conclusion, a letter. You're so smart. Mm -hmm. Well, how often do you think to write a letter? To Never. Somebody? You know, uh, the kids don't these days don't know how to even write letters. I, I know. know. It's sad. Yeah. They I don't know. know how to address an envelope. They can't do it. No, I know they don't. They have no yeah. idea where. No, they don't. I, you know, I taught a life skills class a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I had this whole curriculum, a syllabus of things that I wanted. One of them was some self-defense. We were going to talk about that situational awareness. That was in there. I realized after day one, I have to scale this way back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it yeah. Was, oh, yeah. So the youth of today is not what it was. No, it There's sure definitely an different. advantage to going back to the Different generations, techniques. that's for yep. sure. Yeah. Absolutely. But that's what, that's what, you know, the only thing, you just got to think out of the box. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we can get on Fox now that it was, you know, they bought, bought KUSA. The other KUSA. thing I think you should do is I think you should go up against uh, Kiwanis and, and Seroptimus and all the different speaking groups that are in San Diego, they're always looking for free guests. And I'm always willing to go speak. And yeah. what's interesting is but I the always- the hardest thing is just lining everything exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. And I always love telling the story that if you were to tell 17-year-old me that I would be doing what I'm doing today, I, I would have told you you were crazy. Because yeah, yeah. believe it or not, I used to be a shy little girl back in the day right. who didn't like public speaking. And now that I've now been Now look on, at you. Now look at me doing live interviews, doing speaking engagements. And 
you know, the confidence that I've gotten from that has yeah. been astronomical. It, it has been. But the and passion it, is what drove it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And when you're passionate about something, it's really easy to talk about. And so what I love about NAMI is the passion is there that I get to help other women. Right. Right. And being able to help women take safety into their hands, teach them about guns. And mind you, like I grew up around firearms. Right. right? And I've been involved with San Diego Can Gunners for about four or five years now. And so I love the fact that's that that's not a very long time. It's not, but I've been shooting since I was like five. Yeah. And so people were like, well, where did you learn how to shoot? And I'm like, I, I learned from my dad back in the day Gordon. and I've, you know, take instructions. But hey, if you want to learn more about NotMeSD, not me, go to NotMeSD.org and we're happy to help. Let's do it. Hey, the gun show's back in San Woo! Diego and Gun Owners Radio is giving away tickets. That's right. You need to join San Diego County Gun Owners, uh, Gun Owners Radio and the rest of the community. At the Big Gun Show on June 3rd and 4th. It's going to be at the East San Diego Masonic Lodge. And vendors from all over the U.S. That's right. The U.S. will have modern firearms, antique firearms, knives, hunting rifles, gun parts, ammo, collectibles, and a whole lot more. Tickets are only $15. But you can win them free at Gun Owners Radio. To enter, the drawing just fell out the form at gunownersradio.com slash gunowners. Don't forget the Gun Owners Symposium is happening too. Two days of presentations just for gun owners alone. The symposium is free with the gun show admission. Right. Well, this is our favorite subject. Not quite yet. We're not quite done with the gun show. Really quick. So the gun show is, uh, the title sponsor for the gun show is 511. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh-huh. That's right. Absolutely. So each presentation of that symposium is, and because the title sponsor being 511 is going to offer a 511 backpack, a rifle bag, or a range bag. And all attendees who come actually will receive a 511 drawstring pouch with goodies, which is pretty awesome. So lots of winnings, lots of free things, lots of 511 gear to be given away. Uh, attendees will have an opportunity to also win a three-day pistol class from Gunsight Academy, which has, if you've never been to Gunsight and you don't know, it has a value of $1,255. Wow. I know. There's also going to be gun prom tickets given away. And Alexa Athletic Gear and more. So if you would like to uh, to have an opportunity to win some really fun stuff, you're going to show up and uh, have a great time. All right. Now it's our favorite Now it time. is. This is uh, Sam the Gunman. He's been uh, doing answering r- uh, gun trivia for quite a few years. And he's got a pretty good record. And if you uh, send us a question and we use it, uh, you automatically either get a hat or a shirt, but if you can stump our nephew, then boy, I tell you, it's been a while since he's he's been stumped. So I don't even know what they're giving away, but it'll be That's, definitely worth. I thought they're giving away cases of Bud Light. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah, he doesn't drink Bud Light. So uh, how you doing, Sam? I'm good. How are you guys? Not too bad. Not too bad. We got Desi in the house, and she's going to nail you with this question. So hi, Sam. We'll have to check Hi, and see how well you're going to do. You ready? All right. You ready for your question? Sure. Let's have it. So Mike from San Diego asks, what is the largest shoulder-fired rifle? Mike from San Diego. Thanks for writing in. Um, what is the largest shoulder-fired rifle? This is another one of those questions like we had, I believe it was last week, where it, it depends a little bit on your uh, definition. Mm. Um, because some people might consider something uh, man-portable, but uh, some people might say that for it to qualify as shoulder-fired, you have to be able to fire it uh, offhand or standing, uh, whereas some people might just say man-portable. So for largest shoulder-fired, I will use the most expansive definition, which is to say... um, just largest that a single person can fire that is man portable that is not mounted to a fit placement um, and for that I'm kind of torn between two possible answers uh, one of them could be uh, some kind of anti-tank rifle uh, part of me wants to say the Lati L39 because that's one of my favorites it's a 20 millimeter anti-tank rifle that weighs about 109 pounds Um, and usually takes a crew of multiple people to carry all the parts, but it is still not mounted to a fixed emplacement, so you could call it shoulder-fired. The other answer that, and this is the the one I think I'm going to go with, is Fat Mac, which is a custom-built rifle chambered in the Wildcat caliber 
950 JDJ, which, as the name suggests, fires a very large solid brass bullet that is almost one inch in diameter. Um, so I'm going to say probably the answer he's looking for is the Fat Mac. So I would have to disagree with you there. The answer that I I have, and this is from our team over here, is recently featured on his YouTube channel, Kentucky Ballistics shot the four-bore rifle, the world's largest shoulder-fired rifle. A four-bore bullet weighs 2,150 grains, one inch in diameter. Shotgun slugs are typically 383 to 438 grains, about five times smaller than the four-bore rifle. Shotguns produce about 30 pounds of felt recoil, the four bore rifle produces upwards of two hundred pounds of felt recoil. That had to hurt. I know. Have you heard of that one? Um, I have, and that being that that's the answer submitted, I would disagree with either the premise of the question or the way it was asked. Now, I... the the <laughs> question for which that would be the answer would be: What is the largest caliber shoulder fired rifle? Technicalities, I, come on, Sam. Well, no, no, I, no. I, I, now I did the research, and he is correct on the 950 uh, JDJ. By the way, uh, it, when I looked up largest shoulder rifle uh, or shoulder fired rifle, I popped 950 JDJ. So, right. I, I we will have to give him credit. I think for there this you one go. today. All right, half credit. No, he gets I full would, credit. I would call that one a draw because the question needs to be more specific. Well, for yeah, that to be the answer. I, I have to agree. What do you think? You knew which uh, one it was. No, I, I agree with Sam. I think that's a, I that's agree a good with call. Sam too. That, that's the consensus because. Agreed. Of course, Agreed. again, you gave way more information than even the answer to this one, even though it was wrong. The answer to that. Yeah. Joey's yeah. learned stuff here. Listening I know. To I, that's why I look forward last to Last part show. of the show, anyway. I know. Now, the <laughs> only problem I have is trying to remember the answer to the question. I can do the question, I can never remember the answer because they're a little <laughs> technical for me. It's a good question, though. Uh, Mike from San Diego, thanks very much yeah. for writing that in. Um, if it had been a little more specific, you would have you would have definitely gotten me. <laughs> exactly. I so, love that. So what's the blog this week, my friend? Uh, this past week's blog post um, is a good old-fashioned debunking. Um, and what I debunk is an entire website run by a gun control lobbying group called uh, the Violence Policy Center. And this website is called Concealed Carry Killers. And its purpose is basically to portray licensed, you know, trained uh, concealed carry permit holders as violent maniacs. Um, but what I do is I go through and I demonstrate how their data actually supports the opposite conclusion, that concealed carry permit holders are much more law-abiding than the rest of the population. Um, and I also point out that they disclaim that their data may not be complete, um, which, if it's not, then they shouldn't be using it to lobby for gun control. And if it is, then it doesn't support their conclusion. So they lose either way. Uh, but I think it's a pretty interesting blog post because I wrote it. So uh, you all can go read that on the SDCGO blog. All right. Fantastic. Well, hey, are you working tomorrow? Um, no, I'm not. Well, uh, I am. I have work to do. Well, uh, of course, but... you always have work to do, but at least you... And go do t tomorrow what you'd like to do. So enjoy your day off. Thank you. You too. All right. Thanks, Sam. Same guy. Thanks, Thanks Sam. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Sam. All right. Very good. <laughs> uh, symposium right around the corner. Write it down. Gun show. Should be fun. Or and, and the, if you're and not well, if you're not and if you're not familiar with the location of the Masonic Lodge, it is at the inner. It's it technically is an address on Tommy Drive, but if you look at it, your familiar streets, your cross streets, it's on the inner at the intersection of Cowles Mountain and Navajo. Mm, okay, all right. Cowles Mountain. What's and Navajo. the cost to go? Fifteen, and and then you can go on the website, uh, Gun Owners Radio slash Symposium, and get a three dollar off coupon. All right. Last minute or last minute discussion of anything that you'd like to get out like not me sd i mean if you're looking to apply and you're looking for help with firearms not me is here to help all the ladies that are out there we never want knowledge or anything else to be a hindrance there so go to notmesd.org and we are happy to help any woman out there and if you've ever thought about getting a firearm or you have questions or you just don't know where to start we're a great resource we're here for you and we really want to help be a part of that firearms journey so, and you know, and age is not an issue. Nope. Although we still want you to be at least 21 so you can purchase a firearm. Right, right. right? But I'm so, just, I just meant, so if you're up in age and... I've yeah. had women that are 75, 80 come to the I'm program. Mm -hmm. so all of I a mean, sudden you become alone, your husband's passed away. Right, yep. Yeah. 
How about you, Joe? Anything to any play? Anything you training anywhere soon? Um, no, just the uh, the um, CCW Next Steps training uh, yeah. and the uh, pepper spray and situational awareness. We do it every third Saturday. And who are we? Uh, it's me, actually. Well, it's uh, CCW <laughs> it's USA, but Probably I teach them. Uh, CCW USA. Okay, yeah. So people. So can you can find the schedule up there, or you, right. if you went to the um, USCCA site, go under in-person training. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you'll see all the classes up there too. Don't don't choke. He's getting all choked up about it. I know. <clears throat> well, he gets pretty emotional. What about you, Alicia? <laughs> emotional guy. You know, I'm just uh, slaving away doing private instruction. Okay. How do they hook up with you? If oh, they how do they hook up? Oh, so there's a number of ways. Uh, you, they can reach out directly to me through email. You can find me on the website for Discount Gun Mart. You just go to yeah, the website, go. look under instructors. That's how you're going to find me. That's the easiest way. She's one of our preferred female instructors in San Diego as well. Yeah. She don't want to tell you that. No. But. <laughs> well, that's okay. He's a farmer, too. You've been helping Diana, right? Have you done more training classes with her? We did. I don't recall how many, Got it. to be honest. She's also a farmer. I, uh, yeah. Did you know she was a farmer? <laughs> I didn't. We're bringing you tomatoes here in a couple of weeks. Ooh, I love fresh tomatoes. Yeah. That's right. You you were tomatoes. at um one of the events that Nina I went was. to this yeah, weekend. I saw her, right? I saw the, her yesterday. Yeah. yeah. The, what was the name of that event? Do you remember? So it's it was it's called the Hub Expo. Um, there we go. It's basically a group of people that are into sustainability and supporting one another and just. Uh, well, didn't you get a certification? Weren't you a master? I'm, aren't you a master I'm in the process. Gardener? Yeah, I'll be I'll finish. I'm in the cohort. I will finish June 20th as the graduation date. So the Master Gardener program, yes. And that's when the tomatoes will be ready. That's probably about when they'll be ready. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, They're I think uh, Nina bench. signed us up for some um, vegetables now oh, uh, each week. So that should be good. Good, good. Yeah, You're we did good. that years going, ago. Going healthy on us, yeah. are you? Yeah, well, you know, it's it's funny because I, I, we both cook a lot now. I used to cook a whole lot. And then we get so busy and we don't do it. Now we're trying to start doing yeah. it again. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, yeah, her going to that when we just heard about it and she checked it out. So the With fresh the vegetables. Uh, yeah are going to be a good excuse to, to start doing more of that. There you go. Thanks for watching this episode from Gun Owners Radio. If you're watching mainstream media, you're not getting the truth about guns and the Second Amendment. Gun Owners Radio is the easiest way to stay on top of the Second Amendment fight, the fight for your self-defense rights. You can watch our live stream on YouTube every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time, or if you're in San Diego, AM 1170, FM 96.1, The Answer. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform. Just do a search for Gun Owners Radio and you'll find our show. Don't forget to support our sponsors. Click on the links in the show notes and support the businesses that support your Second Amendment rights. Like and subscribe to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.